Today, we will be covering all the core concepts that you need to know about the Boolean logic chapter. First, let's take a look at the logic gates that you need to know. Logic gates are the basic building blocks of digital electronics. By combining different logic gates, computers can carry out calculations and process data. Logic gates work by taking inputs that are either zeros or ones, which comes from switches being off or on. The gate then performs an operation on these inputs and produces an output, which is also either zero or one. You can think of a one as being current flowing in the circuit, and zero as being the absence of current. There are six logic gates that you need to know for the exam. The first one is the NOT gate. The diagram of the gate looks like this, with A being the input to the gate, and Q being the output. What the gate does is that it takes the input that it receives and inverts it to the opposite value. If the input is zero, it outputs a one, and if the input is a one, it outputs a zero. This can be represented using a truth table. Truth tables basically show all the possible inputs that the gate can take and the respective outputs that are produced. So here, this table shows that every input this gate is given will be flipped to the other value as the output. Next is the AND gate. Its diagram looks like this, and as you can see, the gate takes two inputs and produces one output. The way that this gate works is that both the inputs have to be one for the output to also be one. Otherwise, the output will always be zero. For example, if A is zero and B is one, the output will still be zero because, again, the condition of this gate is that A and B have to be one. That's why it's called the AND gate. Next is the NAND gate, which is the complete opposite of the AND gate. NAND is an abbreviation for NOT AND, and the gate is basically an AND gate followed by a NOT gate. As you can see here from this truth table, this gate produces the opposite results of the AND gate. With the AND gate, you needed both A and B to be 1 for the output to be 1. However, with the NAND gate, for the output to be 1, A and B must not be 1. All other combinations are okay. Alright, next is the OR gate. With this gate, as long as one of the inputs is 1, the output will be 1. So input A can be 1, or input B can be 1, or both inputs can be 1, which is why it's called the OR gate. And following on from here is the NOR gate. As you might have guessed, NOR is an abbreviation for NOT OR. And the gate is basically an OR gate followed by a NOT gate. Neither of the inputs can be 1 for the output to be 1, which is the complete opposite of the OR gate as you can see from the truth table. And finally, we have the XOR gate, also called the exclusive OR. The symbol for the XOR gate looks like an OR gate, but it has an additional curved line on the input side here. Unlike an OR gate, which produces a 1 if any input is a 1, the XOR gate requires that only one input is 1 for the output to be 1. The inputs cannot both be 1, and they also cannot both be 0 if you want the output to be 1. Okay, so in the syllabus, it states that you need to know how to create logic circuits, complete truth tables, and write logic expressions. So let's take a look at how to do those. Let's start with how to write logic expressions because that's quite easy. Okay, so here's a past year question I found from October-November 2024. And so what they want you to do is to write a logic expression for this logic circuit. Okay, so x, y, and z are the three inputs that we have and w is the output. So we need to look at them from left to right as this is the direction that the electric current is flowing in. So at the top here, we have a NOT gate with this input being x. So this section here performs the function NOT x, meaning that in this part of the circuit, whatever x currently is will be inverted as it's passed through the gate. So I'll just make a note to myself here that this is NOT x. Down here, we have the XOR gate that uses y and z as its inputs. So this section performs the function y XOR z. And here, there is an OR gate that uses the result of the previous two operations to produce the output W. So when we look at the big picture, our final answer is NOT X or Y X or Z. Also note that you have to put the Y X or Z in brackets to show that it comes before the OR operation. If you don't, then it will look like this, which could cause some confusion on which operation that you do first. Do you do the NOT X or Y first? or do you do the y, x, or z first? So yeah, make sure you put the brackets in the right place. And as you can see, we got the answer correct from the mark scheme. 
Okay, I got this other question from October, November 2023. So again, we have to work from the left to the right. Here we have a NOT gate taking A as the input, so we have NOT A. Next, there's an AND gate that takes NOT A and B as inputs, so this is NOT A and B. And down here we have NOT C. So the final gate is an OR gate that takes these two as inputs, so overall we have NOT A and B or NOT C. And here's the mark scheme. Okay, next we'll look at how to create a logic circuit from an expression. So basically, it's like the reverse of what we did just now. Okay, so they gave us z equals not a or b and b x or c. Okay, so you have to do the ones in the brackets first. So let's start with not a or b. First, I'll draw a not gate with a as an input. And then next, we need an and gate that has not a and b as inputs, like this. Okay, now we can work on the next bracket, which is B, X, or C. So you just have to draw an XOR gate with B and C as inputs like this. As you can see, B is used as an input twice here. So you just draw like a line coming out from B and you split it like this. Okay, and now there's an AND gate that connects these two, so we draw it here like this. And that leads to the output Z, and we are done. Here's the mark scheme. They give you one mark for each correct gate with the correct inputs as shown. So in the exam, please make sure that you draw everything clearly. Okay, and now for the final part, which is completing truth tables. Here we are given a circuit and we have to figure out the output that will be reached when we use like these combinations of inputs. Some people like to do this method where they write all the inputs on the diagram and then figure out what the outcomes are. So like for example, it's like, oh, this is 0 and 0, so this null produces a 1, and this is 0 and 0, which produces a 1, and then these two ones in the XOR gate produce a 0, so Z is 0. And then they erase it, and then they work on the next row. So you can do this method if you want to. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it, but I feel like it can be quite tedious to do, and it can get a bit hard when if they give you a lot of you know uh, gates to work with. So here's an alternative method that you can use. Firstly, what you do is that you label each of the gates with your own letters. So for example, this one I'll label with P, and this one I'll label with Q. And this one leads to the output Z, so we're just going to call it Z again. Alright, then you have to identify what is the function of each of these gates. So like basically, we're just breaking the circuit down. So P is A nor B, Q is B nor C, and Z is P XOR Q. So I'll just divide the working space like this. One section for P, one section for Q, and then Z is the output. Okay, so then what we're going to do is that we'll figure out P and then Q and then Z. So logic gate P here, um, it produces an output from A nor B. So what we're going to do is that we're going to cover the C column and just look at A and B. And we're going to perform the NOR operation on each of these combinations. So what do we know about the NOR gate? The NOR gate will only produce a 1 if both the inputs are 0. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to, every time I see two zeros, I'll just write a 1. And every time it's not two zeros, we just fill it in with a 0. Because this is how the NOR gate works. So we've done that for P. And then for Q, it is B NOR C. Again, the NOR gate only produces a 1 if both the inputs were 0. So we cover the A column and then we just write a 1 every time there's two zeros. Okay, and now Z is P XOR Q. So we've already determined P, we've already determined Q. So we just perform the XOR function on each of these input combinations. So what do we know about the XOR gate? It only produces a 1 if both the inputs are different. The inputs cannot be the same. So every time we see that an input is the inputs are different, we will write a 1. For the rest, we write a 0. Okay, so that's our final answer. So let's check the mark scheme. And as you can see, we got it all correct. So if you want to use this method, you have to number one, be very careful when you take into consideration all the inputs. And also you need to have a very solid understanding of what all the gates do, like all the properties of each gate, so that you can do this method quickly. Okay, so that's it for this recap video on Boolean logic. Please leave any questions that you have in the comments, and thank you so much for watching.